All right, in uh, number five here, we are given a simple random sample of 71 cans of regular Coke. The volumes from this sample have a mean of 12.35 ounces and a standard deviation of 0.27 ounces, and they appear to be from a normally distributed population. Use the sample data to test the claim that the population of volumes has a standard deviation greater than 0.25 ounces. We want to use an alpha of 0.1 for the significance level here. All right, so as usual, the first thing we want to do when solving a hypothesis testing problem is go through and state the null and the alternative hypothesis, and we do that by going through and finding our claim. And in this problem here, it says that the claim that the population of volumes has a standard deviation greater than 0.25 ounces. So we can see in there that we have standard deviation. We're looking at the population standard deviation, so sigma is the parameter that we're going to be testing. Our claim here does not include equality, it says greater than. And so our claim is representing the alternate hypothesis in this problem. So we can go through and state our null and our alternative hypothesis. And we have that sigma is greater than 0.25 ounces. And again, this is our claim. Since our claim here has an inequality, either a greater than or a less than, less than sign, that's going to make it a one-tailed test. If it's an equal sign with a slash through it, so a not equal sign, then it's a two-tailed test. Again here, we can treat this inequality like an arrow to figure out whether it's a left-tailed or a right-tailed test. Since this looks like it's pointing to the right, we say it's a right-tailed test. At least that's how I remember, and that's how these uh, end up working out. Our null always includes an equal sign. And so our null here is equal to 0.25 ounces. So it is believed that the population of Coke soda cans has a standard deviation throughout their volumes of 0.25 ounces. But this person measured 71 Coke cans and found that they had a 0.27 ounce standard deviation. They say, well, hey, that's higher than what Coke claims to provide. So we want to go through and see whether Coca-Cola is wrong using a hypothesis test. So we want to see whether this is strong enough evidence to claim that for all Coke cans, the standard deviation should be greater. So we want to go through and we want to state the critical values. Whenever we're, pop, um, whenever we're testing a standard deviation or a variance, we want to go through and use the chi-square distribution. And so that's the last table that I have listed in, um, for the uh, charts in this assignment. And in order to go through and get the critical values, we're going to need both our degrees of freedom and our alpha to help figure out what the area in the tail is. In this case here, we know it's just a one-tailed, right-tailed test. So we can draw a little picture to go through and see what that looks like. We have our chi-square distribution, which starts at zero. It doesn't go from negative infinity to positive infinity, like the z and the t distribution. This distribution actually stops at zero, but then extends off to positive infinity. It is heavily skewed to the right. And so we have some critical value denoted here as chi-square sub alpha, which has an area to its right here, so in the right tail, of alpha of this 0.1. And so we want to figure out what is our critical value here. We have our degrees of freedom is 70, and our area in the right-hand tail is 0.1. So we can go through and pull up our table. That's the last table in this assignment. And we have here the first column, or not the first column, but this column here with 0 0.1 represents the column with chi-square critical values with an area to the right of 0 0.1, but the critical value varies depending upon the degrees of freedom. And in this case, we want to use 70 degrees of freedom. So I want to line up this row with 70 degrees of freedom with this column that has 0 0.1, 
And when I do that, I'm getting 85.527. And so that is our chi-square critical value for this problem. So we can go through and fill that in. Next, we want to go through and determine the test statistic for this problem. So we have a chi-square naught formula equals to n minus 1 times the sample standard deviation squared divided by the population standard deviation squared. Again, the sigma is coming from our null hypothesis. So we go through and we plug in our values. We know that the sample standard deviation is 0.27 ounces listed in the problem. We go through, we plug this in, we compute, and we're getting 81.648. And so we want to see if this test statistic lands in our critical region, but we know our critical value is over here at 85. 81 is less than 85, so our test statistic is not lying in the critical region. So we fail to reject the null. If we were able to reject the null, then we would have enough evidence to support the claim. But since we failed to reject the null, we do not have enough evidence to support this claim. And so we can go through and phrase our final answer here by stating that at a 90% confidence level, there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim that the volumes of standard deviations is greater than 0.25 ounces.